EV Comply, simplifying your charge point installations. Hey, howdy, hi, it's the 22nd of October, Friday, and here's your latest EV Roundup brought to you directly from EV Comply. Starting the week with this news, a new Coventry EV battery factory is planned to open in 2025. The firm behind the proposal says a facility could boost the regional economy by £434 million and create 6,000 jobs. Coventry City Council and Coventry Airport are continuing to pursue investment opportunities with battery manufacturers from around the globe, with a view to raise £2.5 billion for the plant's construction over the next four years. Ultimately, they say it will cover more than 500,000 square metres and have an annual capacity of 60 gigawatts. It has not been confirmed how close the project is to reaching its fundraising goal, but the organisation behind the scheme are pledging it will be in operation by 2025. Some thought he was cutting corners, but Elon Musk's strategy of using a less expensive, more practical battery is now being rolled out globally. It's getting more cars on the road faster, which ultimately will win the EV race. These aren't just cheaper batteries, they are safer and readily available. That means even if they aren't going to take Tesla several hundreds of miles away on one charge, they will drive the company towards greater sales and ultimately wider adoption of greener vehicles. A Tesla Model 3 on these lithium-ion phosphate or LFP power packs can still go 290 miles and that really isn't bad in terms of distance covered. Excitingly, a VW ID4 has set a record for the longest journey by EV in a single country. The electric crossover completed a 35,000 mile trip across the United States in just 97 days. They were awarded the title for the longest continuous journey by electric vehicle, non-solar, in a single country by the Guinness World Records. The duo bypassed the driven mileage set by the previous record by more than double. They even managed to visit 628 VW dealerships in the process. By May 2021, nearly 260,000 pure electric cars and 535,000 plug-in models, including PHEVs, were on the road. But there were a woefully inadequate 25,000 public charging points. The Competition and Markets Authority predicts we will need more than 10 times that number by 2030, according to a report on EV charging. Audi, Jaguar, Volkswagen and Volvo are all phasing out petrol and diesel car sales. Tesla, Volkswagen and Nissan have also developed their own private membership charging infrastructure, but they remain closed loop and have no industry-wide compatibility, which is doing little to solve the EV charging issue. However, that has not stopped fleet sales increasing, with the EV commercial fleet in the UK expected to grow from 2.3 million in 2020 to 9 million in 2025, as one in three fleet managers commit to having at least half of their fleets as EV vehicles. EV prices are proving to be a sticking point for adopters. Now, EV adopters are currently paying through the nose for the vehicle itself. That's quite apparent. The average price, according to Autotrader, is £49,377, with financing agreements coming in monthly on an average of around 500 The fuel savings are staggering, though. So home charging a car for up to 200 miles costs just £2.50, according to to industry estimates. That's £27.50 less than a petrol car. Obviously, depending on the vehicle you are comparing, the pence per mile cost can drop from as high as 20p per mile for a petrol car to less than 5p per mile for an electric vehicle. Given price hikes in the wake of the recent fuel crisis, the idea of the average EV driver paying just £310 per year on electricity to charge a car driving, let's say, 10,000 miles at the UK's average electricity price per kilowatt at home is highly appealing. But charging networks do need to expand in all areas and charging needs to take less than the current 30 to 40 minutes as that is proving to also be a massive turnoff for early adopters. Here's one for you. West Yorkshire breaks the record for the highest number of rapid EV charges. A pioneering project between the West Yorkshire Combined Authority and the Quans has delivered 85 EV charges across the region. It's said to be the highest number of rapid charges for any UK county, bar London. 
The partnership started two years ago after the West Yorkshire Combined Authority secured almost two million from the Office for Zero Emissions Vehicles, the OZEV project as you'll know it, in 2019. Aquans, the new branding for NG service-led activities, was subsequently appointed to accelerate the provision of EV charges and encourage drivers in the region to make the switch from petrol and diesel. In other news this week, Addison Lee has teamed up with tech firm just park in a new EV push to provide drivers with off-street charging points for electric vehicles, which we all know is needed. Available from November, the deal will grant drivers access to Fleet Charge, a charging solution that provides charging locations for fleet drivers. The solution was developed by Just Park in collaboration with Octopus Energy. They say we are delighted to help accelerate Addison Lee's journey to becoming fully electrified, while helping to drastically reduce the fleet's carbon impact and pollution in London. Big news in the EV industry this week, the electric car grant. The new government net zero incentives were explained with EV charging points extended across the UK. It is thought that around 8 million households without dedicated off-street parking will benefit from the injection of cash. Boris Johnson on Wednesday announced a £620 million investment in the electric car grants as part of the government's green investment plan. According to the Net Zero strategy, the grants will be distributed to local on-street residential charging, as well as targeted plug-in vehicle grants, allowing drivers to get a discount on the price of new low-emission vehicles. Gulf Oil on Thursday launched a range of e-fluids for hybrid and EV passenger cars. These products were introduced in the international markets including Europe, Middle East and China earlier this year and now the Hinduja Group owned company is launching them in the Indian market. Gulf Elec driveline fluid is designed for wide range of applications, including wet and dry. It ensures electrical properties in both fresh and aged oil and is suitable for applications where the axle fluid is in direct contact with electrical components. Gulf Formula Hybrid Advanced Engine Synthetic Oil and Transmission Fluids for Hybrid Cars will help in maintaining peak engine performance across a wide range of temperatures. Interestingly, Australia's most generous EV support package passed into law this week. The package includes a £3,000 rebate for new electric cars priced below 68000 and a stamp duty exemption for EVs below 78000 It also allows for incentives such as the right to travel in T2 and T3 transit lanes. The rebate and stamp duty incentives were due to come into effect from September the 1st and will be backdated to them, which is very generous. The government is also spending 160 1 million on expanding the EV charging network. It aims to have more than 50% of new car sales to be electric by 2030 and will ensure that all of the government car fleet and public buses will be electric by 2030 also. Now, what we love most about the EV industry is that we've kind of scrapped the traditional looking car. No longer do they have to carry an engine and no longer is there a rule book. And this is proof. We now have the Israeli foldable electric car you heard me right it's foldable now it's going to make its debut as an emergency response vehicle it can contract to just one meter wide for easy parking and maneuvering to get onto emergency scenes if needed now the city transformer is the israeli automotive company behind an electric car that can shrink in size to squeeze into parking spots and they have announced a new partnership with the emergency medical response organization united hadzala to incorporate the startup's foldable urban vehicle into the organization's fleet and we think it will do quite well and finally, electric vehicle subscription service Onto has launched its debut TV campaign on Channel 4 and Sky following its £175 million investment drive. The Happily EV After, see what they did there, campaign was created by Onto's recently appointed ad agency creator in collaboration with Media and Measurement Agency Chamber. Landing on October the 20th, so on your box now, it's to coincide with COP26. The ad features an EV being driven in the clouds. 
playing on the fact the subscription is very freeing and the service is obviously needed. It came to the market in 2017, the Onto service, and it hopes to capitalise on growing demand for EVs off the back of the UK's fuel shortage and the forthcoming COP26 summit, as mentioned, and we wish them all the luck with the campaign. So that's all from me. You're now in the EV No. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with you next Friday. From everybody here at EV Comply, you have a fantastic weekend. And remember, if you wish to listen again to this podcast or any previous podcasts or future, then please do be sure to go online. That's ev-comply.com. Just click on pods and blogs.